buddy Chris how you doing Chris What's going on, Patrick? we are here on our weekly commentary program the network this is part one of a two-part series we're dealing with on the first part we're gonna talk about the passing of Apple executive Steve Jobs and the passing of civil rights uh, pioneer uh, the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth who made his transition on this week Chris let's start with Steve Jobs w what are your feelings on uh, Steve Jobs a lot of people proclaiming him to sainthood uh, this week without examining the evidence of how this man made billions of dollars and how it affected um, the American public who seemed to be his biggest market, uh, not realizing he was one of the biggest outsourcers of jobs uh, for a, a company. He, he was one of the beginners of this. Yeah, um, one thing about I've known about Steve Jobs ever since I was in computer school back in 1980. Uh, 1982 mm -hmm. in Buffalo, and at that time, computers were just in there, you know, they were just starting to get to the po point where you could buy one at home. Right. But they were very expensive. You know what I'm saying? They maybe $10,000, $20,000, or whatever the case may be. And they we, they were different. Uh, you didn't have laptops then, but you had mainframes, or as we call them today, desktop computers. Right. That's what they really, that's what it really are. You know, so... Um, you know, I had to I, I had to take some like five languages, you know, basic Fortran and stuff like that. And you know, you you found out about Steve Jobs then because he was in the news and you you were hearing about Apple computer was just coming up, and and I think Jobs may have been at Macintosh or something right. or whatever before then. Mm -hmm. And they they were big. And of course, IBM was the biggest. They were the kings right. at that time. Uh, they hadn't really uh, experienced a decline yet, and. You know, Jobs, along with this other guy, you know his name, I, I forget his name now, the co-founders of Apple, mm -hmm. very innovative, you know, and it was a whole lot of information going around, lots of magazines and, and, and you know, like Byte magazines and all that going around about computers. They, they were about to make his entrance, and we didn't know anything then about Windows. This is before Windows. Right. This is before Microsoft. Right. Okay, and Gates was in it all, also, but... You know, it, it was, uh, you know, this this is right in its, you know, the computer revolution was right in its infancy. Right. You know, we had just gotten out of using card computers. You know, you, you had the big computers. Computers in the old days were about half, probably half the size of this room. Reel-to-reel -reel tapes and, and, and <laughs> information spewed out on a card maybe longer than this. Or, right. You know, but now they were becoming more user-friendly. Right. And, you know, Jobs was one of those people that was looked upon as being one of the innovators of the computer era. A visionary, no yeah, question. without it, you know. Uh, but you hit on some very good points. You what, know, a, um, what about his uh, his production of, of this so-called affordable uh, computer? Uh, well, see, that, was there the slave labor? Evidently. You know, um, I ran a, 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 a story this week in the Buffalo Bullet, uh, written by my one of my columnists, Alberta Parrish, and she was very, she did some very good research, as she always does, and she's uh, she says basically there was slave labor, a lot of it involved, nothing, uh, nothing, um, nothing to run from. It's there. It is what it is. Um, I'll put a couple of links on there. The, the thing about jobs, yeah, you can have a home computer, you can mass produce anything if you get people to do it. And especially do it cheaply, right? <laughs> you know, so the obviously he Jobs is not the in, in, the founder of outsourcing. You know, uh, plants, auto factories, and steel plants had done that before him. Mm -hmm. But he had done that with with Apple. He began doing that, and one of his chief, his chief um, uh, manufacturers is, is based in China, right? This is very bad. Uh, those people work under for maybe five or six dollars a week, under very uh, depressing conditions. They are sometimes forced to stand up for fourteen hours. Mm -hmm. There has been uh, lots of stress going on with that depression. Uh, so there's been a, a high amount of. Is there yeah. a high amount of suicide? I was going to suicide was going to be my next comment. Right. Uh, not you know not only is suicide 
um, a factor. This is what Jobs specifically did about the suicide mm -hmm. problem. He made his employees over there sign a no suicide contract. Wow. Now, who ever heard of that? Okay. No suicide contract. Yeah, no suicide, uh, no, no suicide contract in order to work there. In other words, so he's he's basically telling you you don't have a right to commit suicide on me. You got to continue making these uh, making these chips or whatever it is you're making. You know, uh, you know you don't commit suicide on me. You don't like the you don't like these conditions too bad. Well, let's let's, uh, let's look these at people some... are being forced to stand up for 14 hours at a time. Okay, something else involved with that that we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's the illusion. Uh, that doing business in a so-called communist country, right. he does not have to pay health care insurance because it is part, it is of, part state, of the right. state of China. Right. So he, in America, you would have to pay health care. Right. Here, and, and by doing business in China, not only do you get cheap labor, but health care is already part of uh, the Chinese uh, right. way of life sure. in, in that society. So this is a guy that was operating out of China and Malaysia that's being basically made into a visionary uh, type of legend here in America. And he was part of one of the worst trends of outsourcing of American jobs. Uh, people today are kind of uh, detaching that from their, their thought pattern regarding Steve Jobs, okay, uh, from their sentiments. In other words... They don't want you to bring out the outsourcing. They don't want you to talk about the, the slave labor and the suicides. You know, you, 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 can't, you, can't dis, you can't take away the good from the bad. Right. Or, or you can't separate the two. You know, uh, these things are not detachable. Okay? Yeah. On one thing, he revolutionized the computer industry. On, on, another, on the other hand, look at how many people he, he hurt in the process. It's not worth it. It just isn't worth it. So, uh, you... you my, my, you know, uh, Miss Paris, she underwent a lot of criticism on Facebook and on the, my blog, Buffalo Bullet. You know, people just really objected to her bringing that up. Well, they, uh, they're not looking you at know. things realistically. No. We don't, no. We're not studying uh, the day that we're living. This guy right. benefited from the uh, <clears throat> deliverance of the New World Order. When the New World Order, when you, you had one form economy of government around the world, Mm -hmm. a, a world economy. He used it to his advantage, right. which he should be given credit for, mm -hmm. but he proliferated uh, slave labor, cheap wages, and outsourcing of potential American jobs. He still made maximum amount of money off of American society, but he did not provide the employment no. as far as production and uh, levels in American uh, society the way he should have. He outsourced jobs. That's the bottom line. Was he a visionary? Sure, a visionary for that, but you got to yeah. look at it for the way it is. Let's also sure. make a comparison in the second part uh, of, of this part is that on the same day of his passing, uh, a civil rights legend, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth passes. Right. We both put um, dedications on our Facebook pages uh, to the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, but he seemed to be overshadowed even yeah. in the African American community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by Steve Jobs. Right. And how do you see that? How can a person that gave his life for you enjoying the things that you enjoy today, mm -hmm. you don't remember him on the day uh, that he makes his transition? It, right. It's scary. So, you know what, black people have a habit, because we, we accuse white people of doing this, but we do the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? We always want to choose who's important and who's not important amongst us, and, you know, it, our culture today is controlled by our youth, unfortunately, okay? And they're, they're the, you know, the fact that they don't know a Fred Shuttlesworth, but they do know uh, DMX or 50 Cent, yeah, <laughs> okay? Yeah. There, there's something there's something wrong somewhere. All right, uh, Fred Shuttlesworth. Yeah, he was very part, very much part of that movement. And yes, he didn't get a lot of attention because that that was him. That's how he was. Very low profile individual. But he is one of the founders of the SCLC. Right. And before then, the SCLC was directed specifically toward uh, toward transportation. It was the uh, uh, SCL uh, transportation L LT or whatever. I forget the, the the acronym exactly, but that was during the thing with the, the Montgomery bus boycotts and all that. Right. You know, um, you know, so they they, they they geared it towards that, and and integration. You know, all of that was in in the lettering. 
After that, they changed it to the SCLC. Martin Luther King, uh, Abernathy, Shuttlesworth, you know, uh, Ruspin. You know, it's about good six, seven, eight, eight brothers all involved in that. Right. Okay, and they, they, they got that going. They started something very strong and very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it and that thing, that very thing, just just rolled along, and and, and uh, broke lots of barriers, endless barriers, and we this we cannot afford to not know uh, who Shuttlesworth is. Right. It, it just seemed funny <clears throat> to me, Chris, that people would respond very quickly. I understand this is a new high tech society, immediate gratification, but to me, my world stopped and had to pay homage uh, to the commitment, the sacrifice of a Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, who was part of that big three, one of the original founders of, of the SCLC. Yes. And he was just as important as Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy. Yeah. I mean, he was an integral part of the civil rights movement. His house was bombed. Yes. Uh, dogs were sicked on him. He spent many nights in jail. Uh, for the privileges that most African Americans enjoy today in this country yeah. is due to the sacrifice uh, of the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth and, and yeah. there's still many others uh, yeah. that are still out there. The H. Rap Browns, uh, yes. uh, the Kwame Therese, all of mm -hmm. them gave their lives yeah. uh, for the rise of the rights of African people in this country and it just it just makes me wonder what are we teaching our children for them not to understand that type of importance? Oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, Shuttlesworth, um, you can't you can't ignore his contributions, uh, no kind of way whatsoever. And it's important that you bring up the H. Rap Browns and all that. They were all in that together. Uh, Kwame Ture, uh, whatever uh, these guys, uh, they they went they they, they broke up and formed uh, SNCC. SNCC, right? You know, uh, another strong organization. You know, so um, uh, the Shuttlesworth, even though he was a key in component of the nonviolent movement, he was known to be a very combative individual. Oh yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people put his own personal agenda on the back burner to help to to be with Kim because he knew this was a good idea. He knew he could work, but he himself is not is not nonviolent by nature. Okay? Right. Okay. You know that, that that's the thing and. Uh, the day his house was bombed, he got a, uh, I, he may have gotten a warning from a police officer who was a, who was a KKK member or whatever, but he just got out of there, okay? They put 16 sticks of dynamite in his, out, right outside of his window. Right. He escapes, uh, they tell him, hey, they say, hey man, you almost died, you gotta leave town. He right. says, no. He, so he tells them, I wasn't saved to run away. Right. God didn't save me to run away. Right. Okay. So he only left town. He moved to Cincinnati way after the fact, after they had got accomplished what they accomplished, and stayed there for year and, and established a pastoral uh, uh, organization there. And then he went back to Birmingham. You know, back in two thousand seven and retired, whatever. Right. But you know, what great service! What great service this man uh, d did all these years. Lifetime of service. Yes. Lifetime of service. Yes. Well, we're going to wrap up this segment of the network. Uh, this is part one of our series today. I'm Pat Freeman. This is my buddy Chris Stevenson. And we will see you again with part two. We're going to talk about Dr. Conrad Murray, the Michael Jackson murder conspiracy. And also we are going to discuss the infamous saga of Bishop Eddie Long continues. <laughs> That's all for the network. We'll see you next week. Next week. All right. Thank you.